<laughs> Hello there, Bob Brockway. Got another ion electrostatic, no, no, no. Yeah, true. Electrostatic motor to show you. I showed two in my slideshow and I wanted to show you the second one. It is a little different in the respect there's just a few changes that are different now we still basically is, is built the same I want to discharge this thing because I'm going to handle it I don't want any surprises but here we have now this is the actual rotor. This is the this part on top is the dampener. It's actually a neutral. And all that is this now this rotor is different than the other one. It actually is two clear clear disc. It's just put together. They're not glued together or anything, they're just laid together. Mounted in the one over the other. Now this is a different story here on the dampener. This is two CD discs, and I left the aluminum is on on both plates, and I put the aluminum sides together, and then I sealed the outer edge so it wouldn't spark over because the aluminum comes pretty close to the edge here. Now this is a little heavier unit, and it's a little different hub design. That's why I can't, even though this looks basically the same and then the uh, as the other motor, it it won't work. It's got to have a different. I had to redesign the axle because the hub here is, is just slightly different. Even though it is an aluminum hub with a nylon sleeve over it, as you can see here, I have the. Uh, uh, now we have the barrel. I call them barrel type emitters. You see the. Both are the same, and this is different because the emitters are exactly 180 degrees apart from each other. There's no, there's no step like the other one had a 30 degree brought in. Well, this one doesn't, and as you can see, it spins quite well. But you'll notice there's a pretty good wobble on the damper plate. I never could get it to be really that good and but it works so we're going to start it up that's the biggest change as you can see I didn't mention it on the other one the other one's big, built the same too as here you can put maybe hopefully you can see the hex nut it's just a set screw in the center, and that becomes the end. Of, it sits right on the point end of, of the axle, and it acts as a bearing. And there we have it. Now, within there again, we have the oscilloscope, and it is hooked to the axle. Now this one doesn't show as much a charge, but we came out for a real high humidity day. It is now back down. It's, it's about 59, 58% humidity. It just, but I finally got things charged up so they work. And I hope the camera is picking this up. That always bothers me because I can't be in two places at once when you're running a one-man show here. You do get into trouble that way. But as you can see, hopefully there's enough wobble in the damper plate that you can tell that it's turning. Now, I had it running earlier. It runs fine. You see, it starts by itself. It starts quite easy. It doesn't take very much. But remember, we're running different type of uh, anode and cathode, and it definitely is. This is positive, this is the anode side. That's, it doesn't matter, but 
it happens to be the way this is set up. And this the, that's the, the cathode and this panel on this side. But you see that this type electrode, this barrel type that I use on the thrusters, works just fine in this application too. In fact, this is the first time I act, this was on the, where I actually applied this barrel type design. It's the very first time I ever used it. Now, you can adjust it. I got them in pretty far, but it's all right. It's running good. The, the rotor itself, as you can see, is running really true. It's over 2,000 right now, as long as I keep going. And it'll pick up speed. Oh, it actually runs better when you run it a while. The charge, because you got to remember these things are spinning ions are coming off, and they're hitting the plastic, clear plastic part. And this, eventually, the plastic starts. It, it starts holding a charge. It, it, uh, it uh, dielectrically stressing, and it'll build up. And I can tell by the resistance on the uh, Wimmers. But as you can see, it spins quite easy. Like I said, they're just a lot of fun. They don't really have any real practical purposes because the torque is just practically non-existent. Except for the uh, for the inertia buildup. There's really not very much there. Very little. And it could be used, like I said, for... Uh, Freezer, or a reed switch, or a proximity switch, or a photoelectric switch. You could switch with it if you needed. I can't imagine really why, but if you wanted to, it would. As long as it didn't take any load off of it. I wouldn't even think it'd run a mechanical type situation very well. But as you can see, there it is. Alrighty, uh, it'll spin the usual time, it, probably close to 10, 12 minutes, depending on how far, how much inertia I was able to build up into the rotor. But it, it, it spins along pretty good. Well, I just wanted to make a quick video of that. It's, uh, like I said, it's just around between 58, 59% humidity. By the way, it's June 28th. 2011, and uh, we've really been kind of an up and down weather this spring, like the <laughs> pretty much the whole country has. Of course, I'm not so I'm not saying anything new there, but we've had a lot of rain and real high humidity at this end of, up here in this part of the country. Can't stay with a can't stay ahead of. Mow the grass. Got to mow all the time. Well, all right. That's all I wanted to do. I wanted to show you that. Talk to you later.